Hello, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Wajma Aslami. I am the early college coordinator and one of the counselors at Mountain House High School. Today, we're going to be talking about the early college program here at Mountain House High School for our incoming freshmen. Agenda for tonight is we're going to go do an overview of the early college program, the application process, the conditions for act acceptance, and things to consider when deciding if this is right for you. So what is the early college program? A program that combines high school and college in a rigorous supportive environment that enables students to graduate with college credits and the tools for college and career. Currently 94 Mountain House High School students are in the early college program. Since this program started at Mountain House High School, we've had 37 students who's, who have graduated with a high school diploma and an associate's degree. Currently, we have 16 students on track to graduate with a high school diploma and an associate's degree as well. What will I earn in the early college program? <clears throat> students who follow the sequence of this program will graduate from high school and have the option to earn one or both of the following. The intersegmental general education transfer curriculum, which is better known as the IGETSEs, and that is um, mainly for UCs and CSUs. Um, and then, or an Associates of Science in, math, um, in inter Interdisciplinary Studies in Math and Science. Students who enter the early college program as a freshman don't have to decide what path they're going to choose until the spring of their sophomore year. So it gives them a little bit of time to join the early college program and then decide which one is right for them. And we'll talk a little bit more about the differences between the two paths. So we did talk about this a little bit. The IGETSI is a series of courses that California Community College students can complete to satisfy freshman, sophomore level, basically lower division um, general education requirements before transferring to most colleges and majors at UCs and CSU campuses. How to choose between IGETC and the AS degree. So early college students will choose their path, as I mentioned, in the spring of their sophomore year. Both paths require two college courses in the fall and two college courses in the spring. So as they're taking their high school classes, they will be taking Delta classes on top of that, um, two in the fall and two in the spring. For the AS option, that means students will also add two college courses every summer in their sophomore year, and they will also take an additional class in the fall and spring of their senior year. And I'll map this out a little bit. So here, here's a great example. Um, so if you're taking, if you're choosing the I get the option, you'll be just doing everything that is not highlighted in red. If you're doing the AS degree, the highlighted in red are the added courses. We'll talk about, we'll talk a little bit more about the courses that get articulated onto your high school transcript, which means if you're taking them through the early college program, you won't have to take certain classes at our high school because we, can, we count it as dual enrollment. So the classes in blue are the um, courses that you will take at Delta College that you won't have to take at the high school. And there are a total of seven classes that fall into that category. Econ, Poli Sci, History 2B, History 17A, English 1A, Math 12, and English 1B. Okay, so now that we have talked a little bit of, about the classes that you would take at Delta College as part of this program, so for freshman year, you'll still take English, math, social studies, science, PE at the high school. You'll also take a world language and a pathway course. And then sophomore year, as you can see, is similar, but you'll since you'll be taking world history um, at Delta College, the equivalent, you will have a you'll have more room for an elective or a flex. Okay. So many students will take in their freshman year seven classes at the high school 
and also two classes at Delta College at the same time. And in their sophomore year, either six or seven classes and also their Delta College courses. What are the benefits of the early college program? So many students that will that are in the program gain experience in taking college level courses. It is a huge financial saving versus taking the same courses at a UC or CSU. You get you guarantee you are guaranteed a spot in the cohort classes. So all the classes that are part of the cohort are guaranteed to our early college students. As many of us may know, Classes get full very fast at Delta College, and sometimes your student may not be able to get into the class. But if you're a part of this program, you are guaranteed a spot. Some courses count for both high school and college credits. Students earn 30, and we did talk about those seven courses that count for those. Uh, students earn 37 or more transfer units and may be considered for junior or sophomore or junior status at the UC, CSU, and other universities. And it saves time towards college graduation. The nice thing about the, earlier I mentioned it's a huge financial savings. This year, Delta College um, is allowing high school students to take classes for free. So that's um, a huge financial sa savings. So earlier we talked about the classes that count for both college credits and at the high school, and um, here they are. All the Delta classes that are added to the high school transcript are weighted classes. So English 1A, so with this, so, so English 1A, if they're taking the, at Delta College, it means that the students don't have to take the equivalent course at the high school. In their junior and senior year, especially, um, they don't have to take too many classes at the high school. <clears throat> okay, some important information. So as I mentioned here, I'll, let me go back. Oops. When I mentioned that these classes are equivalent, like English 1A is equivalent to English 11 or AP Link, that means that it wouldn't be right for you to take English 1A at Delta College and take AP English at the high school. You cannot take the equivalent class both at Delta and at the high school. This is called double dipping and does not help you on your college application. Both classes will not be put onto your high school transcript. Okay, You will need to report all your classes, both Delta and high school, on your college applications. If you do not, it could be considered false representation and it could result in, res in rescinding your, ap your college application. What steps do I need to take? Um, let me actually go to a different slide. Okay, so the criteria used for acceptance. So students must apply during the eighth grade year. This program, um, for this program, you must have a minimum GPA of 3.0 on your second trimester report card. You must meet the winter MAP scores for both math and language arts. There is a student and parent application. Two teacher recommendations are required. Enrollment in math two in ninth grade. So many of you may say, well, my student hasn't taken math one yet. We do have a math petition where your student may take math one with us um, in the summer, okay? So in order to be a part of the early college program, they must start math two in ninth grade, okay? Also very important, they must also choose a professional pathway. And the way they select the professional pathway is they have it in their course request. So for example, let me, Actually, I'll go into um, examples of what our pathways are in a second. So here are some steps that we'll, we'll actually talk about this in a little bit as well, but I'll just go over it really quickly. So you'll apply to Delta College in early April if you decide that you wanna be into the program. Part of the process will be most of the, so when you're, 
selecting your classes at Delta, you'll actually go through Delta. It won't be through Mountain House High School for those classes. Once you retrieve your Delta student ID number, um, then you'll, sorry, I just got this a little bit. So uh, yeah, so once you get your ID number, then we'll go over how to register for each class in the fall and the spring. And if you're doing the AS track also for the summer. So there is a early college student application. I have the links here, but I will also email these out to everybody um, that was invited today. There's also a parent part of the application and then two teacher recommendations. Okay. This application will be due on March 12th at 11.59 p.m. The student essay, um, basically we just, this is a very rigorous program and we just wanna make sure that students and parents um, are aware of that and really wanna be a part of it. It's a cohort, all freshmen start together and they'll end together in their senior year. And part of the essay process is we want to select students to be a part of this program that we feel are ready for it. So we ask, why do you want to be in the early college program? And what will you do to be successful at taking college courses while in high school? Okay. And for parents, similar questions. We talked about the math petition um, so that you can enroll in math too as a freshman. Okay. If, you're, if your student is already in Math 1, then there's nothing for them to do. We talked about having to choose a professional pathway. So students must complete a three or four year course sequence in their pathway at Mountain House High School. The professional pathways include engineering, biomedical sciences, computer science, arts, media, and entertainment culinary arts, business, and sports and movement science. Students can change their preference in the first two weeks of ninth grade. So let's say you, you selected computer science and then you started the classes and then you decided that you wanted to do engineering. If you submit a course request and we're able to make that change for you, then you are able to change your professional pathway in the first two weeks of ninth grade. Okay, things to think about. College means college. If you're gonna be a college student, then that means we expect you to behave like a college student, have academic integrity, and also there's a confidentiality piece of it. So we'll discuss that a little bit further. Transcript grades in college are permanent. That means that if you don't feel like your student is ready for college level classes, then might be something to think about because if they start to take Delta classes and they don't do so well in those classes, that's a permanent record. It stays on their Delta transcript forever. Cost, um, we talked about Delta classes being free for high school students. And class content, this is really important. Um, throughout the years we have had students that have started the program and shortly realized that some of the content um, in some of their courses are for adults. And so they didn't feel a little, they didn't feel comfortable taking the class, which is perfectly fine, but that's why we tell you now so that you understand. For example, if you're choosing the AS degree pathway, there is a bio psych 30 class, which is human sexuality. Um, Classes have both cohort students and adult students in them. So that means that if Delta has in-person classes in the future, that your child may be attending class. They'll be in with their cohort, but there will also be maybe adult students in their classes. Attendance is very important. If you miss so much of a class, you will be dropped. So let's say you're taking chemistry and you're doing really well in the lab, but you're not attending the class and you have an A, but your attendance is poor, you still may be dropped from the class and you may receive an F in that class due to poor attendance. Students must follow the cohort educational plan to stay in the cohort. So earlier I showed 
a slide with all of the classes that the cohort students take. That doesn't mean that they could take them in whatever order that they want. That means that they take them with their cohort in that semester that it's listed in their cohort plan. Students who earn an F in a college class show academic dishonesty or reported negative classroom behaviors may not be able to continue the program. Okay. Must maintain a 3.0 GPA in high school and at Delta College to remain in the early college program. Early college students often cannot participate in sports, academic competitive teams, and competitive music groups. The reason for that is sports usually is um, after school. Delta College classes are usually after school as well. Um, they're usually in the evenings at the Mountain House campus. Yeah. Attendance, like we talked about earlier, attendance matters. Even if you have an A in the class, your attendance still counts. Okay, as a college student, your parents may not talk to teachers or Delta College. So if there's an issue with not, not being able to log in or not register for classes, unfortunately, parents can't pick up the phone and call and um, ask details for the student. Okay. Activities that excuse you from high school do not excuse you from college. So let's say that you decide you still want to try to play on a sports team, but you have an away game and you have to miss class. Usually if you're at the high school and you have to leave early, we excuse you for that event. However, Delta will not excuse you from college level classes for your event at the high school. Students are rep responsible for their own communication, problem, problem solving, and grade monitoring. Okay. You, as a part of this program, you do have me to support you in this. You also have a Delta College counselor, Dr. Ortega, who also supports you in this. And Dr. Ortega will be joining us in a little bit to answer any questions that you may have. Here are some important dates and timelines. So we did talk about when to apply to Delta College, when the application from Mountain House High School is due. So once I receive all the applications on March 12th, our counseling team will go over them and we will send, in, send ac acceptance notifications on March 16th. And then March 23rd will be our acceptance orientation meeting where we where we will talk more a little bit more about everything that we talked about today, but a little bit in depth as far as um, what is expected as an early college student. For more information, you can go to our Early College Pathway website. If you go to the Mountain House High School under Academics, you'll see Early College Pathway. If you um, under that, it'll say Steps to Apply. So the application for parents and students and teacher recommendation links are on there as well. Okay, so throughout the years while we've done these presentations, I've had a lot of um, frequently asked questions. I'm gonna be going over some of these frequently asked questions and then at the end of the questions that I go over, we'll have a link where you're, you'll be able to submit your questions as well. So I get this question a lot. Can my child do I get C or AS degree on their own? Yes, it is very possible that they can do either I get C or AS degree on their own. However, this means they do not get the same level of counselor support that students in the early college program do. Okay? They are not guaranteed their classes and they have to stick to the Mountain House High School policy on when classes can be taken for articulation. So over here I have an example of our articulation matrix. So if you want to take world history at Delta College to be articulated onto the high school, you have to take that in your the fall semester of your ninth grade year. Our cohort takes it in the spring, but because we know that you're a part of the cohort, we allow exceptions to this matrix. Okay. So, so sometimes it's very hard for students to meet these articulation timelines to complete their degree. So it is possible, but it might be a little bit more difficult. 
online at Delta College. Since late May, since late March 2020, Delta transitioned all of their courses to an online platform. Delta classes will remain online until they announce otherwise. It is important to note that early college cohort students will take face-to-face -face courses at Delta College once they go back to in-person. For example, if the cohort is taking in-person English 1A class number, let's say one, two, three, four, five, all cohort students must take that same class, okay? That means that your student cannot take the online English 1A section three, four, five, six, seven, instead of the designated face-to-face -face class for our cohort, okay? I have an example here. As you can see, Delta offers maybe 30 of the same classes, but they all have a different class number. I usually send out the class number for our cohort, and that's the class that we expect our cohort students to sign up for, okay? What is the difference between an AP class and a college class? So AP courses are designed to prepare students for college level work by offering a more accelerated and challenging course of study. The most important part of an AP course is the big exam at the end. Doing well in an AP class itself is a good indicator that a student will be awarded college credits, but in order to earn college credits, they have to do well on the exam. With the early college program, students are earning the college credits, so there is no need to take the exam, okay? All right, what if my child joins the early college program and then decides they don't want to continue? So Mount House High School doesn't, does not specify anywhere that your child is in the early college program. If your child starts taking classes at Delta and then decides that they no longer want to be in the early college program, um, then they can simply drop the cohort, okay? It is important to keep in mind that Delta's transcript is a permanent record. This means your child will need to complete that semester and um, they are in in order to drop their, so if they're in the middle of the semester and then they decide they don't want to be in the cohort, they, if they withdraw from their Delta classes, there's a W that stays on their transcript saying that they withdrew from the class. So they may have to complete that semester and then not continue further. Okay. If your child drops the early college pathway, uh, we will still need to submit a transcript of their Delta classes to colleges when they apply. So if they went for a semester or two and then th they decided they didn't want to do it anymore, um, they will still submit their Delta transcript to the colleges that they'll be applying to. Exiting the early college pathway may change the classes that are eligible for articulation to the Mountain House High School transcript and will mean that your child no longer has priority enrollment in the early college pathway courses. What if we want to join the program in the 10th grade? So the early college pathway is a cohort design, meaning all courses are taken together at a scheduled time. Students that do not join the early college program as an incoming freshman are not able to join at a later point. Students do leave the program for various reasons, but the only students that can complete the pathway must be admitted prior to the start of ninth grade and will finish in the spring semester of their 12th grade year. This is a very popular question. So my son wants to go to Stanford. Do these college credits transfer to Stanford? Transfer credit is reviewed and awarded by Stanford. This is straight from Stanford's website. So transfer credit is reviewed and awarded by Stanford's Office of the University Registrar according to Faculty Senate policy. While Stanford has no articulation agreement with any college or institution, a course generally receives transfer credit if it meets the following conditions. Okay. Basically, if your son or daughter wants to go to an Ivy League school, a private school, or an out-of-state school, anything outside of a UC or CSU, it is best to check with that school whether courses from Delta College will transfer into their school. Okay. When we talk about IGETSI and transferring and a and all of these other um, Delta College related classes, 
They're specifically to UCs and CSUs. My child wants to do engineering. How does this benefit them? All students going to a four-year university complete a sequence of undergraduate courses in order to complete their bachelor's degree, regardless of what their major is. Many of the courses taken in the early college program are UC CSU transferable. Again, for private or out of state, you will need to check with that university. So how does this benefit your child that wants to do maybe engineering or computer science? They'll take a lot of their lower division classes through this program where they can focus on their engineering or computer science specific courses at the school that they're going to after high school. So it gives them more time and saves them um, a lot of the lower division general education courses. My child wants to be fully online next year at Mountain House High School. Can they still do the early college program? One of the criteria in, to be in the early college program requires Mountain House High School students to select and complete a Mountain House High School pathway. Unfortunately, our pathway courses are not offered online. Therefore, students can be fully online with the exception of their pathway course. That means that at least one of their courses will be face-to-face. -face. So technically, yes, they could be fully online taking the rest of their classes, but they will have to take their pathway course in person face-to-face. -face. All right, so those were some of the frequently asked questions that I just reviewed. Um, there is a link on the screen that you can type into your browser to ask any additional questions that you may have. And we'll have Dr. Ortega joining us to answer any questions. Dr. Ortega, why don't you just say hi and introduce yourself? Thank you, Joni. Thank you, Wajma. Great presentation. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our uh, presentation of the Early College Program. Uh, I want to tell you how impressed I am with Mountain House High School. This is our seventh year of collaboration with them. And every year the program gets better. In the high school side of things, I've noticed that the students that join the cohort program get lots of support from the administrator and Joni and also from Wajma, the counselor. These guys are really good. We do work together. So we're kind of sort of like a parental team here. Um, we work together before any decisions are made and the priority for our students is high school. So above everything else, you must be doing well in high school to participate in our program. And together we can provide you the information to succeed in the early college program. So that's very important. So any questions you may have, we're here to answer them. I'm a counselor and a faculty member at the Mountain West campus and at the main campus in Stockton. Welcome everybody. Thanks you guys. Thank you, Dr. Ortega. And just for those of you who don't know, my name is Joni Hellstrom. I'm the associate principal here at the high school and I work directly with Wajma Aslami on coordinating the early college program here. I'm going to be asking the questions that I see come through on the form of uh, Ms. Aslami and Dr. Ortega. So I'm gonna go ahead and start because there's a couple of questions. And the first one is for Ms. Aslami. The question is, can I take math one in Delta and take math two in high school freshman year? No, I don't, um, Delta doesn't offer the math one class. Um, so no, it is best to just do the petition and take the class with us. So can I- Yeah, the only way to take math one prior to your ninth grade year at Mountain House High School is to take the Mountain House High School course in the summer. And once you complete the petition, we'll open the course early. We'll try to open it late April um, so that you have a little bit more time than just the six weeks of summer school to complete that course. Um, Ms. Aslami, uh, there was a question asked if you would go back to the slides with the due dates and just show the due dates again. So the due dates um, for the app student application and parent application and teacher recommendation is on March 12th. Um, and I'm going to be emailing all of you with the due dates and also the links. All right, thank you, Ms. Aslami. The next question is also for you, Ms. Aslami. The question is, will the college courses be counted in our GPA? 
So the seven courses that I mentioned, uh, which are, are History 2B, History 17A, English 1A, English 1B, um, Math 12, Econ, and then Poli Sci, those seven classes will be added to your high school transcript and they are weighted classes. So they will count as part of your high school GPA. Thank you. The next question is for Dr. Ortega. The question is, what is an AS? Could you please explain it more? Yeah, thank you. That's a good question. Just a sound check. You guys can hear me, right? Yes? Yes. Perfect. So when you start your journey towards the university after high school, there's several options that you get. The first option that you get is an associate degree. This is a two-year college degree. And it's the first time that you can call yourself a college graduate if you graduate with a two-year degree. And those two-year degrees, associates are divided into AAs, which are Associate of Arts, which have to do with what we call the soft sciences. So these are, these are things like psychology, drama, history. And then the AS degrees denote the technical or math and science degrees. So these are things like AS in math and science, AS in computer science. So there's a difference. You have your soft science AA degree, which are the uh, history and drama and theater and arts. And then you have the AS two-year degrees. After the two-year degrees comes the bachelor's and the master's and the doctorate. And we'll talk about that when you guys are in class. Thank you. The next one's for you also, Dr. Ortega. Will the Delta classes be daily or a few times a week? So that's a really good question. The way that we have it set up right now as it stands, um, with the current cohorts that are in action right now, all classes are asynchronous and online. Asynchronous means, for those of you that don't know, that there is no standard meeting time. When, God willing, we return back to campus, hopefully in the fall, and everything depends on how you know, our, our government, our state government and federal government decides if we're going to go back or not. But when we come back and we're in in-person classes, typically the classes are one night a week. And so you would have it typically your uh, GE class would be general education would be from, say, six to nine. And then you have my classes the first year, which are from four to six, along with that class. So for Delta, you're looking at two classes. Each class is one night a week. So you may have classes at Delta on Tuesday nights and Thursday nights to cover both classes. Each class is one night a week. But there's no guarantee, right, Dr. Ortega, at this point, which nights those classes will be. It just depends on the schedule. That's correct. Th thank you. Um, so there is no guarantee as to what you're going to take now because it depends on the schedule and it depends on instructor availability. We pick our instructors. Typically, we pick instructors that have history working with high school students. But all classes are college classes, and you will be taking these classes with other traditional college students. So it really depends. But before the semester even starts, our team communicates with the Mountain House High School team and we'll tell you exactly what the section number is, what day the class is, and what the hours are for that class. Thank you. The next question kind of goes along with that. It's for you, Ms. Aslami. But I see a few questions coming through asking about if I want to do sports or marching band or something at Mountain House High School, am I not able to apply or what should I do if I know I want to do sports or marching band? It's hard to say because if you, like I said, if you're missing class, attendance is very important at Delta College. Some sports you may be able to do, but it really all just depends. I can't for sure say that you can do such and such sport or marching band. The majority of our early college students have a very difficult time doing both. And it may work out for you to do it in one semester, but the next semester, your days and times may change and it may not work out for you. Uh, there's a question about where can I find this slide? We, I will, we will put this on the website under the Early College Pathway um, tomorrow. Uh, the next question, um, I believe, is for Ms. Aslami because I think it's asking about the high school transcript. But the question is, when doing a course through Delta, if I get a C minus, Will that show on our transcript? So yes, if it's one of those seven classes that I mentioned, it will show on your high school transcript. If it's one of the other classes, 
it won't be on your high school transcript, but it still will be on your Delta transcript. And if you're applying to college, you have to submit both transcripts to the college you're applying to. Okay, the next question, I'm, we might ask you to share more detail about the question. Um, the question is, are there exams for subjects in both high school and college? So Ms. Aslami will answer that, but then it, please, put, please ask the question again. If we don't give an answer, that's what you're looking for. So I'm not exactly sure what that's asking. So um, if you're taking high school classes, yes, you'll have exams. If you're taking college classes, you'll have exams. But if you're taking, let's say, History 2B, which is the equivalent of World History at Delta College, there isn't an exam that you have to take at the high school for world history. You've already completed that through Delta College. Thank you. The next question is, during summer break, am I able to do math two and then do math three next year? No. So the only advancement for math is to take math one to start math two in the fall. Can I say something real quick, Johnny? Yes. Something. So I do want to tell you that Delta College actually does have uh, math one, but it's not the same one that you need to do for Mountain House High School. So like sometimes parents will look at our schedule and they'll say, oh, there's math one. That means I can take math one and it will count for math one at the high school. Uh, math one for us is calculus and it is a high level calculus. It's very fast and that's just what we call it. So the, the names are not equivalent from Delta to Mountain House subject matter is and we don't offer the courses that cover your math one you need to do that at the high school so sorry i just wanted to put that one in there. thank you yeah i can tell you math one here at the high school does not have calculus in it not yet <laughs> um the next question is for Ms. Aslami. could i take delta courses during this summer break no so like i said the the cohort starts in the fall of your freshman year until your the spring of your senior year and you have to follow the cohort to maintain in the cohort. If you're skipping around and doing your own thing, your own thing, then that means you're not in the cohort. Thank you. Um, Ms. Aslami, can students talk to the counselor privately? Uh, I mean, right, not right now, but if you send me an email, then we can discuss options to talk privately. Dr. Ortega, does that go for uh, the Delta counselor as well? So we like to um, defer most questions that high school students back to the high school counselor. Um, and that's very important. Now, that said, you guys as uh, residents of our community are always welcome to make an appointment with the counselor, but you have to have an application on file at the college. And therefore, many of you may not be able to get that appointment because you won't be able to file the application just yet. The cohort allows you to get uh, appointments and actually we do joint appointments together Ms. Aslami and myself every semester of your four years at typically at the high school but recently in the zoom setting because of the pandemic so you're going to get great support if you're outside of the cohort you're still welcome to make an appointment once you start taking classes but the problem is those appointments are not guaranteed and you have to compete with other students that are traditional students outside of the cohort and from other high schools Thank you. Uh, Ms. Aslami, what is the difference between the cohort program and getting an AS? So as being as um, part of the cohort, you have the option to do the IGETZ, which is just a sequence of undergraduate courses for transferring or getting your associate's degree. And I think that's... I would do right, So the cohort will get you the AS yeah. degree um, or you don't need to be part of the cohort to get an AS degree. The AS is the degree and the mm -hmm. cohort program is the structure to get you that degree. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Aslami, where do we get the math petition? So once I email out all the links to the application, I will include the math petition link as well. And it will also be a part of these slides that will be on our website tomorrow. Yeah, actually, you all already have the math petition link as well. It's at the bottom of the letter that was emailed to all eighth graders and parents about their math uh, placement for next year. And Ms. Aslami, what happens if we don't sign up for a pathway? If you're not signed up for a pathway and you want to be a part of the early college program, email your counselor so we can add a pathway course to you. Um, if you decide that you don't want to do a pathway, unfortunately, you can't be a part of 
the early college program is one of our criteria to be a part of the program. Thank you. Ms. Azami, is there an exam that we need to take before being accepted? No, all of you that were invited met the requirements for your math scores. The next part of the application process is to submit your student essay, the parent essay, and the te teacher recommendations. So there is no exam. Uh, speaking of teacher recommendations, I did see a question that came up a little later that says um, that some of the students this year with the way that LVLA or some of their other programs are, they only actually have one teacher. So what should they do about getting two teacher recommendations? It could be from seventh grade, sixth grade. If you can't get two, I understand. Just submit uh, the one and then we can go from there. Uh, Ms. Aslami, what are all the classes we can take? Um, I don't know what that is asking. I, I would actually probably direct that question to our website and on the website it lists the cohort plan and it will show you what every class is that you will take um, as part of the cohort over the four years. Um, uh, Mr. Or or Dr. Ortega, there's a question. Can we take just one class per year in Delta College? So outside of the cohort, you can take one class per year. And like we said earlier, it's not guaranteed. But as a member of the cohort, the agreement is that you're learning in cohort style and you're supporting each other through peer cohort support. So you have to take exactly what's on the plan. That's part of the benefit of the program. And if you do all of that, you can get the- I uh, guess Mr. Or or Dr. Ortega, there's a question. Can we take just one class per year in Delta College? Oh, I'm sorry, could you hear me again? The cohort, you can take one class per year. And like we said earlier, it's not guaranteed. But as a member of the I think we got uh, some feedback there. I'm so sorry, let me repeat that. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Okay, so the question was, can we take one class per semester or per year? And the answer is, you have to follow the cohort plan, which is two classes each semester. And if you go for the two-year degree, the AS, you may end up taking three classes in your uh, senior year, every semester. Dr. Ortega, will you also answer the question about how long is one Delta class? Yes, thank you. So a Delta class is a semester class, and typically it depends on the unit value. So the first class that you would take is 16 weeks, and that class, typically a semester can be 16 to 18 weeks, as an example, you would start in late August and finish in December, this class, one night a week. But the class that in your first year you take with me is only one unit, not three units like the GE class, you take them both. And that class meets 10, eight to 10 weeks out of the 16 week semester. So it depends and we will lay all that out for you. Um, once, the once the program starts, we'll tell you the registration dates and when class starts and when it ends and the meeting time. All that will be uh, given to you, but it really depends on the unit value of each class. Most classes are three units and above, meaning three hours of class time per week. And those classes typically last 16 to 18 weeks, depending on the class. Thank you, Dr. Ortega. Ms. Azami, I'm gonna kind of combine two questions. They're very similar. The specific questions are, do we know if USC or if Ivy League schools consider or take accreditation or take these classes as transferable? So we don't know for sure. I, I know that they do take some of them. I don't know if they take all of them, but for Ivy League and private um, universities, it is best to check with the school themselves. Um, earlier we talked about Stanford, which is just like USC and other Ivy League schools. Thank you. Mrs. Lamy, is the 12 plus four years of education required for future postgraduate studies in the US? So after high school, most bachelor's degrees take around four years to complete. And that's required for postgraduate studies, right? Yes. Yes. To earn an associate's degree, it takes two years at a community college. To earn a bachelor's degree, it takes four years. 
usually at a university. And the associate's degree that you would earn in the early college prep program counts as two of the four years for that bachelor's degree. Yes. That's right. All right. Uh, Ms. Aslami, the next question is, um, if my child completes only two out of seven classes at Delta College and doesn't continue in the early college program, would those two classes count for both high school and college? Yes. So if they're the classes, so for example, they start in their freshman year, the only class that they're taking that would be articulated is world history, history to be. Um, so yes, if they decide in their sophomore year that they no longer want to be in the early college program, that world history class will be articulated. I think it's important to just, when you get the copy of the slides, parents and students, to make sure that you look at that list. Not every class you take at Delta in the early college program goes on your high school transcript. So it's only those classes that we've listed for both. Yeah, there are only seven classes that count for both. Ms. Saslami, um, what is the class needed to take for the biomed pathway? So if you look at the Mountain House course list for this year, you can go to the biomed pathway and the first class that's listed is the first class for the pathway, which is principles of biomedical honors. Um, Ms. Aslami, when and where do we submit the essays? I will send the link for the application. It's also on the high school website. If you go to our high school website, under academics, you'll see early college pathway. Under the early college, if you click on early college pathway, you'll see steps to apply. All of the links are listed there. The app, student application, parent application, and also the letter of recommendations link is listed there already. So you have access to that as of right now. Um, Dr. Ortega, how many courses uh, do you take each semester in the early college pathway? So we'll refer you again to the uh, map that Ms. Hellstrom talked about. And that's the map that tells you exactly what courses you take each semester. And that's the good thing about this program is that everything is laid out so you know exactly the classes you're gonna take. The hours and the times will, depends each semester on instructors and, and who gets to teach those classes. And that's when our team works with Mountain House High School's team and we get that information to you semesterly so you can sign up for those classes. But everything's in the roadmap that's already put in the campus website in your high school website. Thank you, Dr. Ortega. I do see a few questions, Ms. Aslami, that have come up, so we're gonna ask them all at once. But they're basically questions about how many spots are available in the early college program or how many kids will be accepted. I think that might be a better question for Dr. Ortega. <laughs> Delta will have to provide those classes. Yeah, no, we- we don't have a, ma a maximum of how many students. We don't have a maximum. But I will tell you that, uh, just an observation on my part, your high school that you're gonna start, Mountain House High School, is one of the best to set up this program. So all of these, the essay for the student and all the requirements, the essay for the parent and the scores that you have to get, those are things that we do as a team that were designed by your high school to make sure that you can succeed in these courses. So if all of you wanna do it, we would make room. But realistically, our cohorts are typically anywhere from 30 to 40 students to begin with. Would you say, Ms. Aslami? Yes. But there's no max, uh, there's no limit on them. But again, this is these are college courses. These are not high school courses. So the, that's why all this information is provided to you so you can make a sound decision. And I do have to say that historically, high school students from Mount High High School have done really well in our program. Your high school prepares you really well and they provide the support you need. But you got to think this through because this is a college setting that you're about to enter into. We welcome you, but priority is always the high school. Thank you, Dr. Ortega. Um, Ms. Aslami, it's the it's kind of a question, a comment and question. Most schools expect a well-rounded student with sports on their application. How do kids who do the early college program achieve this? So sometimes they're not able to, but I will say that the early college program is one of our most rigorous programs um, that we have at the high school. So this may be what, st what makes them stand out from another applicant um, if it's not sports. And, and I would add that if you look at the University of California's website, there's something called holistic review. 
And holistic review is something you should know. And what it is, is it's like 12 to 14 points that the colleges in the University of California system look at and other colleges do similar criteria that if your student comes in with good grades, but they want a well-rounded student, they will look to the 14 points in holistic review to see what other things they have. And earning a college degree definitely gets you points under holistic review. Sports is another way to make points under holistic review. We have to remember that everyone has different talents. Not everyone can play sports. So if a student can't play sports, this is a great avenue for them to get additional points and become a well-rounded student. So this is just one of many uh, activities that your high school student could do to become well-rounded. Thank you, Dr. Ortega. again. Uh, the next question is with the early college pathway AS degree or direct college credits, are we required to take AP classes as being college credits? The majority of our students that are in the early college program do take additional AP classes at our high school because we don't take um, all the equivalent AP classes at Delta College. And a lot, so you have to understand, because you're not taking um, a lot of your core classes at the high school and you are doing them at Delta College, that frees up a lot of space in your schedule as a sophomore, junior, and senior especially. For example, in your junior and senior year, um, you can only, you are allowed as part of the early college program to have only four classes in your court, in your, as, um, in your classes at the high school, which gives you time to take uh, your Delta classes as well. A lot of students have completed English in their junior year and US history, and they've, uh, they have more space to take AP classes. So yes, yeah, some of our students take um, their pathway class along with other AP classes like biology or physics honors or chemistry um, at the high school. If you're, uh, Ms. Oslami, if you're already a freshman not knowing about this program before, can you still join the program? No, so earlier we mentioned that you have to start the program in the fall of your freshman year as an incoming freshman. But you are welcome to take class, classes at Delta on your own using um, the non-MHHS uh, link on our website to learn more about when you can take starting classes. Uh, Ms. Oznami, can we do all of the early college courses online except the pathway course? Also, when you said that we have classes, is it live or is it asynchronous online? So for Delta, I don't know what they're going to be in the fall. If they're online, then it will be asynchronous. If it's in person, then it will be face-to-face. -face. Um, I, I missed the first part of that question. So if you're fully online at the high school, you will have to take your pathway course face-to-face. -face. And, and then let's just check with Dr. Ortega. Are the online classes at Delta right now asynchronous or are there certain times that kids log in for live sessions? So all the classes that are at Delta related to the cohort are asynchronous. However, um, and so just so we can clarify again, that's a very good question. Asynchronous means that there's no meeting time and that's important. But what's happening with our cohort is that some of our instructors that work with students, uh, they realize that instruction is key so they record their lectures and students are encouraged and invited to participate in these lectures so they can ask questions. But if they don't attend, it's not a penalty for them. They're asynchronous. So what we do is we take the recording of the class, the lecture, and we send it out to everybody that's enrolled. And that way they can see it at home on their own time. What we don't want to do is right now during the pandemic have a certain time and date, excuse me, certain time that students meet because that may clog up some of the bandwidth that they have at home if parents are working from home or, or if they have other kids that are also going to school. So for now, they're asynchronous. And as we know now, the spring is asynchronous online. The summer is going to be online. The fall has not been announced yet. Thank you, Dr. Ortega. Uh, Ms. Oslami, I see several questions. Um, I think this will be the last time that we answer this 
kind of live, but there are lots of questions about which is better, an AP class or a Delta College class. So let's just, if you could kind of address that, and then I'm gonna let people know that any other question that came up about that, that we're going to just address that, those all together right now. So it's, it's hard to say which one's better, um, but an AP course is designed to prepare a student for college level work. If you're taking a college class, then you're already doing college level work. Mm -hmm. So um, the nice part about already taking a college level class is that you don't have to take an AP exam. So let's say you take an AP class, but then you don't score a pass or you don't score like a three or above in the, the exam, then you don't get the college credits. But if you take the college class, then you get and you pass the class, then you get the college credits. So it really depends on the student and what college they want to go to um, and whether an AP class is better or a Delta class is better. I would agree. It does depend on that. But I just want to provide some clarity because I know when I was an eighth grader, I didn't know the difference. So AP courses at the high school prepare you for a certain subject so you can succeed in a college class. But in addition to the AP course at the high school, students sign up through the college board to take the advanced placement test separate from the AP course. The AP course at the high school prepares you to take that test. The top score on the test is a five. So Ms. Aslami was saying, if you get a three, four, or a five, then you can use that course, that test, excuse me, AP test to get college credit. And so the question was, is the AP class better than the college class? Mrs. Islami did a wonderful job answering that. I'd like to add that the AP test versus the college class does have differences depending on the college that you attend. If you attend a college that does not take the AP test for your major, your area that you want to study, it's better for you to take the actual class so you can get credit. An example of that is if your major is in the STEM field and your major requires you to take actual calculus class at the university or college, but you take the AP Calc test and you pass it, even if you get a top score of five, if your major requires you to take that actual class and not the test, you may still have to take that calculus class when you get to the college or university. Thank you, Dr. Ortega. Um, I'm just going to make a comment to the group. I see some questions in here asking really specific for a specific advice about what college courses students should take uh, for different kinds of majors that they might be interested in. And I am going to actually not ask those questions tonight because the early college cohort courses are set courses. They meet the general education requirement. And once your student gets to the high school, they'll have plenty of opportunities to get advising from their counselors about what they how to apply to college and what they should pursue once they get to college. So I'm not, just so you know, I'm not going to be asking any of the specific questions about what classes should they take for this major or that major. Um, the next question is for Ms. Aslami. It says, my daughter took law and society and business as her elective. I'm assuming she signed up for those for ninth grade. Does that mean she won't be able to do mock trial? Um, I don't or I can answer that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how, the, how that's relevant to the well, The thing that I would answer is um, when you get the, the presentation, go back and look at the screen that shows what classes you can take in your freshman and sophomore year. Oh, Ms. Islam, you'll pull it up. So in freshman year, it shows that you'll take your core classes, plus you can take world language. Here we go. Plus you can take world language in your pathway course. You don't actually have to start your world language as a freshman. So if your daughter wants to take business as a pathway course and wants to take mock trial in place of world language, you'll notice the next year there's room for world language and then another elective. So you can wait and start your world language path in 10th grade. You can still get three years in before you graduate and that's how you could do both. Yes, this is just an example that I gave, which a lot of students do, but if something else works out better for you, then that's also possible. Um, there are a couple questions, Ms. Aslami, about um, if the student has less than the GPA, but they have a high math score, or if they're not in Math 1 yet and they don't know if they got the petition, will they still be accepted or will they still be considered their application for the early college program? 
So yes, I had a lot of parents and students email me telling me they're like really on the border of the MAP scores. Um, yes, I would still encourage you to apply. I will review your grades and I will review your application. And if you seem like a good fit for the early college program, you have the opportunity to um, join. I see a question that I'm gonna just answer. It's about when will I know if my petition for Math 1 in summer is accepted? The answer is if you ask for Math 1 in the summer, you get it. So um, you'll find out in April when we send you information about logging into the course. Um, Ms. Azami or Dr. Ortega, what are the maximum number of courses a student can take each semester at Delta College? 11, 11 units. That's it. All right. Um, if a student drops from the early college program after signing up, does that impact grades in the high school or college admissions? No, as we mentioned earlier, um, if you drop from the cohort, there is nothing that indicates that you were in the cohort or that you dropped the cohort. Um, but you will still have to submit your Delta College transcript if you took classes there to the college that you're applying to. Dr. Ortega, there's a question about if a student doesn't do the associate's degree now, but then they choose a science pathway in college for graduation, um, what would be the impact for them when they get to college? So that's a really good question. Let's just put things into perspective. To get a two-year degree, it takes 60 units. And it includes general education, which is the IGETSI that Ms. Aslami was talking about, and major courses. So if a student says, I just want to do the general education, that's called the lower division general education. And the impact is that unlike other first time freshmen that would start at a university that would have to take both major and GE together, your student, if they do the IGETSI, the lower division GE, would only concentrate on major courses. So the impact is that you have less classes that you have to take, which means you can manage your schedule. So there's definitely a huge benefit if you only choose to get in the IGETSI, because at the university level, all of your general education will be done and you can focus your efforts on the prerequisites for your major. And for someone that's going into the sciences, that's huge because those students have to do core botany, zoology, they have to do calculus and physics and chemistry and organic chemistry. That's a lot of classes. And so if you can save a little classes so you don't, your schedule is not so overwhelmed, that would help you. I hope I answered that correctly. Thank you, Dr. Ortega. Um, I just want to point out, it's been an hour. Um, I want to make sure that we can answer questions, but I also don't, um, I, I want to be able to honor people's time. So what I'm going to do is um, pick a few more questions for us to answer here. And then if your question wasn't specifically answered, Ms. Aslami can send you a specific answer via email, except, um, you know what, Ms. Aslami, we didn't collect email addresses. I did, I did. Oh, okay. So, um, we just hit that. There we go. We just hit that from my site. So um, I will say a lot of the questions that I'm seeing are um, answered in the slides. So we're going to be emailing the slides. I believe this is being recorded. Um, and so if the recording worked, we will link the recording on the website. You can come back and look at it again. But most of the questions about what classes you're going to take at Delta, what's on the application, when the dates are, how many essays, all of those questions are answered in these slides and from the presentation earlier. So um, I'm not going to ask those or ask those questions out loud right now. Um, but there is a question that came up about the Delta courses that go on the high school transcript and AP courses. How are they weighted on the high school transcript? So AP classes and Delta classes on the high school transcript are weighted the same. So if you're taking world history, history to, which is history to be at Delta College, and we articulate that onto your high school transcript, you get 10, 10 credits for the class. And if you get an A, that's five points. Just like if you were to take AP world history, it would also give you five points for an A. Thank you. Um, I also saw a question you had mentioned to reach out to the counselor if students need to add a pathway course, they're asking, is that a middle school counselor or the high school counselor? Who should they reach out to? 
reach out to actually just send me an email. Um, my our, our email information is posted on the high school um, website. You can either email your high school, your counselor based upon last name, or if you just send me an email, I will get that pathway course added um, to your transcript. Dr. Ortega, there was a clarification on a question for you about how long is a Delta class? The question was how many hours each day, that, the length of time on a day? Very good. So that's a great question and it, it depends on the, the way the course is set up. But traditionally, classes are measured by units. Most classes in the IGETSI are three units. One unit equals one hour of class time per week. So in an example of a class that meets once a week, say religion 14A or psychology one, that class would meet from 6.30 to 9.30 for three hours. In other words, three units per week for the 16 week semester. If it's a one unit course, then it's one hour per week. However, sometimes classes are condensed and they're late start classes. Um, like mine happens to be a late start. So then you attend more than one hour. You attend one and a half to two hours because it's less weeks that you attend. But for the most part, it's three hours per week for every three unit class. Perfect. I think the last three questions I'm going to direct to you, Dr. Ortega. And then again, for everyone else, if we didn't ask and answer your question live tonight, Ms. Aslami will email an answer to you. Uh, Dr. Ortega, um, well, actually, the first one I'm going to just answer because I forgot it was from Saslami. <laughs> but um, lots of questions about can I join later and do I have to join as a freshman? And the answer is you cannot join later. This is a cohort model and you need to join now as a freshman. And if you don't, you can definitely choose to take separate Delta classes on your own later. But there, there's not an ability to join the early college program or the cohort. Um, Dr. Ortega, if the student wants to take a Delta class separate from this program, is it still free? Yes. So right now, the college early start classes are free. Why do you, uh, Ms. Asami, this started a couple, uh, last year, if I can remember correctly, which is great yes. for our students. So yes. Before, it was $46 per unit. But yes, you can still take classes. But I would advise you to work very closely with your high school counselor. So you know exactly how these classes count. In the same way that uh, we as educational counselors can't advise, say a doctor or an engineer, what to do in their work, the, the world of education here at the college and at the high school is very different. So you want to make sure that they're not taking a class that's gonna impact them later. So I recommend you work closely with your high school counselor once the student gets there. You're always welcome to try to make an appointment with me. The problem is, that uh, because you're not in the cohort, it's not guaranteed. Uh, and so you have to manage a two or three week wait or plan accordingly if you want to meet with me. Thank you. Dr. Ortega, last question is for you. In a normal year, do the Delta classes, are they taken at the high school or at the college? All of the classes right now are taken online, but when we go back in person in a normal year, you take those classes at the college at Mountain House. All right, at the Mountain House campus, which is literally that's down the street from high school. Is, and they built a nice walkway, so that's good. <laughs> all right, I, uh, on behalf of the high school, I really would like to thank all of you for sharing your evening with us, for giving us your time and for investing this time to see if this is something, a program that would be valuable for your student. So we just want you to know that we appreciate you um, we are here to answer questions. Um, Ms. Aslami could be a great resource and we'll be emailing you everything we shared tonight, plus more. So um, is there anything else, Ms. Aslami, you'd like to add? Just um, in case you don't receive this on time, I will be emailing this flyer as well, but the dual enrollment program and college early start office at Delta College is hosting um, workshops on Wednesdays at 3.30 p.m. The next ones are listed here, I will send this flyer out as well with the dates and application and math petition and all of that. Perfect, with that, thank you all very much. Thank and um, feel free to cruise our website as well. There's lots of good information there. And we can't wait to see you and have your student here next year.